have a favorite Bible story. I have to admit, I have a lot of favorite Bible stories, so it's really hard to pick which one is uh, my favorite. Uh, but one of my favorites is definitely the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But before I get into talking about their story, I want to go back and talk about what their Jewish names were. So their names were not actually Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but when they were taken from Israel and brought to Babylon, they were given new names. So to Shadrach's original name was Hananiah, Meshach's name was Mishael, and Abednego's name was Azariah. So Mishael has one that's very similar, Mishael, Meshach, no, not too different, um, but their names were changed. The people of Babylon, the rulers of Babylon, wanted to take their identity from them. They wanted to change them, to make them more like Babylon. So they changed their names. In history, we see this happening also at um, Ellis Island. Um, when people would come from Europe to the U.S., um, sometimes they would change their name to make it sound more American or it would be changed for them to make it sound more American, um, easier to say. And so that happens. And we see that, that trying to um, force someone to blend in or choosing to try to blend in with society. So that's interesting that that's what happened to these guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We'll, we'll go with their name, Babylonish names. But there's something different, something different. In chapter 3 of Daniel we learn that Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. So it was about 90 feet tall and about nine feet wide. And he set this up in a plane and he gathered together the princes, the governors, the captains, you know, all these people. And among those people were three guys who were set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now the king had given a command command. Yeah, exactly. It says in verse 4, then Herod cried out to you, it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at the time ye hear the sound of all these types of music, fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And then there's a threat. The threat being, and whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So this was heralded, the people heard, and some Chaldeans came and accused the Jews and said, Hey, King, didn't you say? They always make it that way. You know, you know, king, didn't you say? And then they go and accuse someone. It's the same with Daniel. They said, Oh, King, didn't thou say not to worship anyone but you? It's the same thing. And so they come and they remind the king of what he said. And then they tell him that there are certain Jews whom thou said of the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So what's interesting is that, you know, there's, there, I'm, I'm in my mind I'm picturing that there's this, this huge amount of people. And it's like, well, how did the king not notice that these three guys were standing <laughs> I mean, were they really hidden someplace? You know, what was happening? Why were they not? Why wasn't it obvious to the king? But it was just those people who kind of were around them. Maybe those people who were making sure everyone was complying. They were the ones who said, hey, king, there's these three guys. They didn't fall down. They didn't worship. Uh, tattletales. Definitely some tattletales going on there. Um, but the king, he is angry. You know, he, you know, he doesn't... Yeah, he just, he's angry. There's things we can say on that, but we'll just go with that. He was angry. He had the men brought to him. And he said, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? He asks this question, but then he just continues talking. He doesn't give them time to answer. And he says, Yo, um, basically, he's going to give them another chance. He says, Now, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, goes through all that, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you should be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that should deliver you out of my hands? So he asks them a question. He gives them the opportunity to do what he says. At the same time, mocking and say, hey, 
well, what God can deliver you out of my hands? I'm, I'm stronger than any God. Um, he thinks. He thinks he is. And um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. These men were talking to the most powerful man in the world at that time. This was before Alexander the Great. This was the great Babylon, Babylonian um, domination of the known world. He was the most powerful man, the most powerful king. And they contradicted what he said. <laughs> you know, yes, our God can deliver us. He is able. They weren't sure if he would, but they knew he was able to do so. And, and so they turn it on the king. They say, we're not going to do what you said. Um, and before it says in verse 13, no, sorry, verse, um, yeah, verse 13, that Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to be brought the guys. And then in verse 19, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and the form of his visage, 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 that's a hard word to say, visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So where he was maybe, he was very angry but he was willing to give them a second chance, you know, realizing perhaps that they're from a different country. Maybe they didn't quite understand what I'm saying. Maybe they, they thought their, their God from their former uh, country is powerful, but I'll remind them that he's not. But they, they, weren't, they weren't buying that. And so, therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. So, he heated this fire up really, really hot. Now, it says that he had his most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Um, and the fire was so hot that the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he chose his mightiest men to throw three men into the fire. You can tell he's not quite thinking this through all the way. He's got his furnace heated seven times hotter than it's used to being heated. He's sending his mightiest men to throw three Jews, three insignificant men, into the fire. And he's going to kill them. His own men. Because he's not thinking clearly. Uh, a reason why it's, it's good to keep yourself under control to... Um, Calm down and think about your actions before you do something, because this is totally nonsense. It's just foolish on his part to do, but it's the fact that he is just so angry that his word is being over. Um, his word is being refused. He's being told no by three insignificant men. He's the king of Babylon. You don't tell him no. Um, but he, he commands them to be tossed in the burning fiery furnace. Now, in verse 21, it tells us that these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, their hats, and their other garments, and they were cast into the midst of the fire. And verse 23 says, And these three men, Jedrak, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then, verse 24, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said to his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire. They answered and said to the king, True, O king. <laughs> they weren't about to argue with the king right now, but it, it was true. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So very significant there. They were cast bound into the fire. But they were loose, walking in the fire. Now you have to think, you know, yes, their, their bounds were probably, their, uh, the bindings would have been burned off. So the fire burned maybe their, their bindings. But they themselves, we'll, we'll read later here, that they themselves were not 
burned. Uh, but in verse 26, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar came near. He couldn't come completely close. He would have gotten killed. It says, He came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then they came forth of the midst of the fire. And everyone who's standing around saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. So those bounds were loosed, whether that was God just making them loose, or the fire burning off what was not supposed to be there, what was binding them, holding them. Um, but they themselves, there was no smell of smoke, they, nothing was burned on them, not even a hair on their head was singed. Um, which in and of itself is a miracle. That's just a miracle. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language should speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because that, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So the king goes from one extreme to the other. So he's like, um, okay, now, now th this God, he's the greatest because he was able to deliver them. And if you do, if you say anything against them, I'm going to you know, cut your house down and, and make it a place to dump trash. Um, it's like, oh, come on, King, you're, you're going to a little bit of an extreme here. Um, but the King, by this action, he believed, he believed that this was, was God. This was the true thing. Um, that God is the true God. Now we see th more happens with him in chapters four and chapter five. Um, we see that he, 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 he trusts even more in God for a while, but then he, he has pride kind of takes over him in chapter five or it's chapter five or chapter, no, it's in chapter four also that, um, his pride comes upon him for a, a certain space of time and then the king at the end of that time you know, he says now I Nebuchadnezzar praise and extol and honor the king of heaven whose works are truth and his way is judgment and those that walk in pride he is able to abase so it takes it takes Nebuchadnezzar a little time to fully um, honor God maybe in the way that he should but this incident with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is kind of the catalyst, I think, that moves him in that direction to then he has this, this dream. So he has this vision about this, um, this tree that's really, really tall, but then something comes and, um, you know, cuts the branches down, and, but leaves the stump. So he has this, this vision, this dream, uh, Daniel explains it to him, um, and then he goes and does exactly what the dream says will happen. But uh, God is merciful to him. And for a while, he's out of his right mind, gets his right mind back. And he worships the God of heaven. So this story, you know, it, we see it as like a great kid's story of how powerful God is. And how we should always do what God wants us to do. Because God will take care of us. And, and it's a great story. But it's also a, a good story to remember as adults that... God can use you to move someone towards salvation. Um, that's what happened with these guys. They chose to do what was right, even though it was going to cost them their lives. But yet they moved the King Nebuchadnezzar by their actions, by him seeing how powerful God was to move him towards, I believe, um, I guess we can't really say salvation, but to f greater faith in God to the point that... Um, his faith was in God and not in the, the gods around him and not in, in himself as being this powerful you know, God figure. So, um, you know, it's a great story for kids, but there's also things we can learn from it as an adult as well.